damage coming off the bench. So he's the leading scorer, but he provides much of his scoring punch off of the bench. Mississippi State does have a veteran lineup, including the transfer jumping center. Jimmy Bell, all 6'10", 280 of them. The former West Virginia Mountaineer. Bulldogs control the opening tap, and we're underway from Starkville, Mississippi. Bulldogs coming off a lackluster performance against Georgia Tech. Chris Jans telling us he was ticked off the way his team played. Really wants to see how they respond today. That's a good way to start things off. How about a three ball from the top from Deshaun Davis? Well, great ball movement right there. Southern is a defensive-minded team. They're going to switch up defenses. You saw there the, the half-court zone that they were in, uh, trying to throw Mississippi off at the start of the game. Southern out of the SWAC conference. They're projected to be fifth in the league. Jackson State picked to be first in the SWAC, and that'll be the first turnover of the game. And that's on number 10, Brandon Davis. They have been the road warrior SEC player. 6'11". <laughs> six, six they play through him. He's a guy that's going to get on the block. He's become, a, obviously he's a great scorer, but he's become a great passer now where he accepts that double team and he's able to kick it out for his three-point shooters, which now, this year, they have much more shooting than they did last year. And I expect so a lot out of DJ Jeffries, too. Mike, he's a, a super senior and he does it all. He's, a, he's a, another veteran guy for them. There he is right there. And you expect him to, to really take on a leadership role. There is the physical presence of Jimmy Bell, and he, his presence is going to be felt throughout the SEC this year as you look at Tolu Smith on the bench. We tried to get a timetable on when he would return, but they're not really saying a whole lot. He's still working on that ankle foot area, and he's, you know, he's had three other injuries on that foot. And so you're being very precautious. If you ask Tolu Smith, he's ready to go, but the coaching staff obviously <laughs> going to be very careful. Yeah, that, that's that's tough for him having such high expectations in last year, right? First year head coach comes in, Chris Jans, the whole team buys in, but it was that guy right there, Tolu Smith, who really had to be the the head of that team. And you know, that's the last thing you want coming into your final season is, is having to sit on the bench. Uh, we know he'll be back, but it's still tough for you mentally as well. Physically, you know he's going to rehab, but he has to be mentally... Uh, be able to handle that as well. 5 nothing Bulldog lead to start things off. And Mike, if Southern if comes in with just one. I was going to say if you find any updates on uh, Doug Chow's and the refereeing situation. Looks like there's just two officials on the court right now. Bulldogs trying to find a seam in that zone. Open three from the wing, rims off. Tapped around and corralled by the Jaguars. Jaguars not afraid to run. But then a turnover and a steal by Mississippi State into the hands of Jeffries. Jaguars doing an excellent job of getting back and stopping the basketball, getting back on transition defense. Inside, Bell with a short leaner. And they are not shy, <laughs> Southern. They want to get up and down the court. Yeah, they want quickly. to go full throttle on every right. possession. Still looking well, for their first basket. You, you know, I don't blame them. Try to beat the size and athleticism down the floor before. Mississippi State's a great defensive team. They always have them. Uh, if you can beat them up the floor, not let them set. Their defense get a much better chance of scoring. Foul on Jeffries. And that'll send Jalen Reynolds to the free throw line. It's a Mississippi State team that came in as one of the best defensive teams in the country. In fact, number one in the SEC in defensive field goal percentage at 35% number seven in all of college basketball with that mark and that is a staple pat bradley of chris jans and what he is able to implement defensively is and it takes a lot of buying he's that's 
you watch him practice, and that's what the majority of his message is. The assistant coach's message is to this team is defensively gives us a chance in every game. If we can lock down, gives us a chance. Now, you mentioned the last game against Georgia Tech, turned the ball over a little bit too much. Uh, weren't, weren't able to make shots. Uh, you know, that, that was the one blemish on their record right now, but from a defensive standpoint, that's always going to give them a chance to win every game. And when you look at what they were able to do last year, they made it to the tournament as the 13th out of 14 teams in scoring in the SEC, and they were dead last in all of college basketball and three-point shooting. So <laughs> they were still able to grind their way to yeah. victories and make it to the big dance. Well, one of the things that helps with that is in Tolo Smith, you got a go-to guy, right? You have somebody you can throw it to. When you're in trouble, when you need a big bucket, whether or not he scores, gets fouled, or he kicks it out uh, on the double team, even though they're not a, uh, as you mentioned, th they were 13 on 14 offensively, but you still had a go-to offensive guy that could down good. This guy might turn out to be a go-to guy in the post anyway. Jimmy Bell Jr., 6'10", 280, originally out of Saginaw, Michigan. And comes to Starkville via West Virginia. The mass exodus of players there after the release of Bob Huggins from his duties. Yeah, it's important. You know, a great shooting team is always a great passing team. And Mississippi State, I know that, you know, Coach Jans recruited uh, in the transfer portal as many shooters as he could, and also, also the, the freshman Josh Hubbard. But you want to make sure that you can establish an inside-outside. It's a lot easier to get your feet set, knock down a three-point shot when it's coming from the post, as opposed to sometimes you're coming off the screen, and then you got to set your feet, and you're a little off balance. One out of two at the line for the big fella, Jimmy Bell, and he'll get a breather. Mississippi State's lone loss came a few nights ago in Atlanta to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech pulled off a couple of early upsets so far in the season under Coach Stoudemire. There's a three and an air ball fired up and out of bounds to the Bulldogs. You can just see the, the length and athleticism for Mississippi State, and that's without Tolu Smith, but I like that full court pressure Coach Jans is putting on. Creating a little havoc out there. 1-3-1 one, one action. One of my favorite defenses. Bet you'd be surprised to know that I played on the bottom of the 1-3-1. One, one. I'd be very surprised to know that. Of course, I'd be surprised to know you played any defense <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, they can hide three. <laughs> three ball from the wing from Cameron Matthews, the senior out of Olive Branch. That's his first three. He was 0 for 11 from downtown. Maybe that'll get his confidence going. Well, Cam Matthews is, you would say, the heart and soul of, of, of this team. That's what he was last year, and he is that this year. That's Tyreon Joseph, by far and away the leading scorer for the Jaguars, averaging 18 points a game. Nobody else averages more than nine. 1-3-1. One, one. Good job of, of movement. Attacking those gaps. Can't throw it through the defense, though. Into the passing lane. The steal. Sets up an open three. Got it. And a nice play on both ends that time by the Jaguars to make it a two-point game. And I think Southern's doing the right thing, Mike. They're, they're, they're pushing it to get at least to get a good shot before Mississippi State can set up that tough defense. Jones, who got his first start today, they work it around and try to go inside. It'll be out of bounds to Mississippi State when we come back. Cam Matthews, great catch and shoot. Feet set. Actually a major upset at the time. It was on the road at UNLV. They were major underdogs and wound up winning at 85-71. to 71. Kevin Johnson, who's paid his dues at a number of smaller schools, including Pat Bradley Centenary. I know you know the answer to this one. What former Celtic went to Centenary? The Chief. The Double Chief zero. Robert Parrish. Yes. The Chief. Great player. And oh, uh, Southern, player. yes, made, made 11 threes in that game. Mike, 61% from the three-point line. They made more threes 
than free throws that they shot. That's a recipe to go on the road and win. <laughs> Although I would say get to the free throw line is extremely important. But if you can make 11 out of 18 threes, you're going to have a chance to win on the road. 11 out of 18 for a team that shoots just 31% from three on the season. Mississippi State at 30%, which again, as I mentioned earlier, last year they were last in the country at 26.6. So they've improved a little bit. But this is probably not a team that's going to win games based on great shooting. But there's so many other things that Chris Jans' squad does well. If they can even improve marginally, Pat, in shooting the basketball, this, again, is a team that would be poised for another NCAA bid. Well, there's no doubt, and you, you know, realize what being able to make just a few threes, right? You don't have to average 11, 12 makes, but certainly when you have a big man like Tolu Smith who likes to work in the lane, you have hard-driving guards, DJ Jeffrey, Shaq Moore, Josh Hubbard, being able to make a few threes opens up that lane for you. Hubbard, too strong on the first attempt. Here comes one on a follow by Shaquille Moore. He fires up a brick, and it'll be out of bounds to the Jaguars. In Southern's defense, again, Coach Kevin Johnson, he is a defensive guy also. Uh, their game plan, not difficult. We're going to force Mississippi State to beat us from the three-point line. They can prove that they can beat you that way. And then on the other end, let's run, let's get out, let's try to get some quick buckets before that defense gets set. A rare instance where the shot clock, a little bit of a factor, under 10 seconds left. The first one is no good. The second one is good. The follow, and that is number 12, Jalen Reynolds on the stick back. And we're tied up at nine. Bulldogs have gone chilly from the field, missing seven out of the last eight. You have to make that pass. It's one thing getting the ball in the corner and gets that one through one. You, you, you know you're probably going to get trapped in that corner, but you've got to move the ball quick. Open three, but a three-second violation in the lane. It's a great attack move right there. And then Reynolds getting up. He's, he's putting some good work here. Big body high. Been able to Reynolds compete with Jimmy Bell and the likes early on. You won't see a ton of zone out of Chris James's team's suffocating man to man defense. Shot clock again ticking down, down to five. Blind pass into three. Mississippi State Bulldog defenders. That was not going to end well. Yeah, that offensive possession is a little chaotic. And again, when Mississippi State's length and athleticism, they close out so quick and they force you into bad decisions, bad shots. Hubbard on the floor, the fantastic freshman who's at the bottom of your screen in the corner. Instead, it's going to be Jeffries on a three. Well, this is exactly what Southern wants to Mississippi State, a perimeter team. Driving layup and an easy path to the bucket that time. Cashed in by leading scorer, Tarion Joseph. And again, Mike, would that take seven seconds? You know, they're just always on the attack. It's a 9-0 run by the Jaguars. The Bulldogs are in the midst of a four-minute drought. That'll put an end to that quickly. A nice cut and bucket for Moore. And up until then, Southern has done everything to keep Mississippi State out of the paint. But it is ball movement, player movement, to beat that zone. What did Chris Jans tell us about Shaq Moore? He said, quote, he has to play better. He's as good of a defender as we have when he's locked and loaded, but we need the best out of number three in white. Under 12 minutes to go and another travel, another turnover. It'll be Mississippi State basketball when we come back. Chris Chance trying to ignite the flame under his squad. We're tied up at 11. This guy does is coach and win. You see the highest career winning percentage for active coaches in D1. Look at those names and look at where Chris Jans is. Three SEC coaches, by the way.
in that mix, the must bus and Coach Calipari, but it, it, it makes sense. We, we kidded with Coach Jans about the, the difference in culture, if you will, from Las Cruces, New Mexico, his last stop to Starkville. He said, well, there's a lot better Mexican food <laughs> in Las Cruces, but you can't beat the barbecue in Starkville. That's right, and what those three SEC coaches have in common, they understand how to build a roster through transfers, and of course, Coach Cal's known for one and done, right? That's, but Coach Jans, because of his junior college experience, he understands quickly the transfer portal, how to recruit it, how to get guys that have only a year or two left to buy into what you want to do. And Coach Musselman's the same way. And Chris Jans did hit the portal and got some talent from there as well, including Jimmy Bell Jr. We haven't talked much about Trey Fort yet, but he's a scoring dynamo, originally out of Jackson, Mississippi. I want to remind everybody next Saturday at 1.30, Kansas State LSU, a Big 12 SEC showdown. That'll be in Baton Rouge. Sean Sunbold and I will have the call of that one. What do we expect out of Matt McMahon's group in year two under his direction? I, I, another coach in year two, he, uh, Coach Jans, Coach Golden at Florida, they hit the portal hard. Ooh, another quick shot, pull up three. But they all hit the, the portal hard and got what they needed and upgraded. The first lead of the game now for Southern, 14 to 12. And they're shooting lights out, 63% here in the early going. Were the great equalizer is that three-point line and Mississippi State they've got to realize again going back to Southern's win against UNLV they go 11 for 18 from three point three percent here in the early going Were the great equalizer is that three-point line and Mississippi State they've got to realize again going back to Southern's win against UNLV they go 11 for 18 from three-point line so you got to recognize that they can get hot and shoot, and they can get going in your building and win. Hubbard, never bashful, never thought twice about taking that three and drills it. What a start to the season for Josh Hubbard, the 5'10 freshman, 39% from downtown, and over 16 points a game to lead the way for Mississippi State. Tough shot in traffic and a good box out that time by Jimmy Bell. Tough pass. Jeffries picks up the loose change. Into the corner. Hubbard again. Too strong on that three ball. One point game under 10 minutes to go in the first half. All of a sudden, Southern cooling off. Hubbard leading the break. Gets it back. Pump fake. Every time Hubbard touches, I think he's going to go up with it. <laughs> Another a bit of a force that time by Davis. Knocked out of bounds. Mississippi State doing a better job of moving the basketball and finding their open shooter. And credit Southern because they haven't allowed Mississippi State to get on the offensive glass. Mississippi State shooting right now at 30% from the free throw line, 29% overall. A lot of missed shot there, but Southern hadn't allowed them to do any damage on the glass. Mississippi State, 10 of their 14 shots have been from behind the arc. So they've got the size advantages, size advantage down low with that guy, Jimmy Bell. And Southern has coaxed them into shooting a flurry of threes. And they've played that protection defense, right? Sort of like a hard shell. Uh, I would like to see Mississippi State move a lot more without the basketball. When they did that, Shaq Moore had a nice cut straight down to the lane. Got a wide open layup. Matthews angles it inside to Bell. Missed it from close range. Jimmy Bell would like to have that one back. And we do have a jump ball with the arrow going to Southern. 
it was a good job to squeeze that and stick stick with it because Jimmy Bell got him a nice look. Uh, you have to appreciate the fact that they are committed now. Okay, yeah, we'll shoot a three. There's going to be openings against that zone to get up a three, but let's try to get it in the paint. Get a couple easy looks at it first. Guy Choi in the game for the Bulldogs. 6'11", 245-pound freshman out of, out of the Sudan. Strip and off the knee of Dumasi. Davis walks it up the floor for Mississippi State on the hands of Jones, getting his first start of the year tonight. Into the corner. Three ball passed up by Taylor. Transfer from Marshall. And then a whistle and a foul on Mississippi State. Yeah, Andrew Taylor. Had... Go ahead, Pat. I was just saying, if he had that back, Mike, you could see the defense was shifting. Maybe one extra pass, make that defense move one more time. And then you find that gap right there instead of one couple too many dribbles. Approaching the eight-minute mark here in the first half. Blow by and a foul drawn. Quick take to the basket by number 10. That's Brandon Davis, their second leading scorer. Foul goes on number 34, Guy Choi. You know, Pat, we're in the month of December now. We, we just got through the SCC ACC challenge. We've had a number of Great out of conference matchup so far. And I got to be honest. I mean, I'm a little bit puzzled where the hierarchy is right now. Every time I think I know who the best team is or the third best team, what have you, all of a sudden the Kentucky loses at home to Wilmington. I mean, I love that roster for Coach Cal. We've had him a couple of times. I think that that's got a chance to be a, a great team in Lexington, Tennessee. Lost a, a, a tough one to North Carolina. Auburn lost today at Appalachian State. But I, I still think this league is very deep and very talented overall. There's no doubt. I, I still think because of the amount of transfers that come into a program, there, there is mm -hmm. going to be an inconsistency November, December, and quite possibly into the first month of the season where guys are trying to figure out their roles and coaches are trying to figure out who is this guy. You know, you have a lot of game tape on them. You certainly still have to get an idea of how they perform uh, in games. So I think there's going to be a lot of inconsistency with the amount of transfers. Guy Chol on the follow. And I think there's a lot of teams trying to find who they are, trying to find their identity and blend in the new talent this time of year. There's a three from the top. That's the third three-point bucket. It's Joseph hitting that one from downtown. One of the things Coach James talked about against Georgia Tech was their defense against a pick and roll. And you see right there is some miscommunication. Do we go under? Do we go over? Are we switching that pick? What about who I'm defending? Uh, is he a shooter? Do we get to get out in front of him? And right there identifying the shooter. That's Andrew Taylor. You and I just had Marshall against Kentucky. A week or so ago, Taylor was one of the top players in the Sun Belt for the Thundering Herd. A big portal pick for Mississippi State. And now a steal in transition. Breakaway and a lay-in hanging and firing is Cameron Matthews. Six lead changes in this first half. Mississippi State has the last one, and the Bulldogs lead it by three. It's their defense getting hands on the ball. Great position by Davis. It's seven and one on the season. End of the month of December. Before you know it, conference play will be here. 
SEC 14 teams strong and still trying to figure out who ranks where. Mississippi State trying to bounce back after a tough loss to Georgia Tech. That was in Atlanta. Chris Jans was very upfront with us about how he didn't like the way his team played at all. And I know as instructional as he can be, Pat, there's no question he had his guys working hard this week to improve on some things. Well, there's no doubt. That was a Georgia Tech team, obviously. New head coach, Damon Stoudemire. They were coming off two losses. That's a, that's a uh, sense of urgency, Georgia Tech was. Not an excuse. Georgia Tech's a good team. And uh, they came out, they came out fighting, scratching and clawing, knowing they had to get get back in the wind column. Quick hands by Moore. Mm. Steal, and there's Hubbard missing the layup. You can see there his explosiveness. That one dribble from the top of the key got him right to the right to the basket. Moore on another rebound to Matthews. And Matthews has it. Out of bounds by Southern. It will be state basketball. 5.51 to go. Too much there. You had that one dribble. You had two guys at the three point line. And Taylor just made one in transition. Defense is trying to identify shooters. You've got to look to see where he is at all times. Weave action up top now into the hands of Hubbard. And threw it to Taylor, who has it slip right out of his hands. There's been a few of those type of turnovers, just mental mistake turnovers. And Southerns, again, these are two defensive-minded coaches, two defensive-minded teams. That certainly has been a, a couple of mental era turnovers in this game. That's funny. It, the, the identity of Jan certainly is, is with a stingy and really good def defensive team he had pretty much everywhere he's been but if you look at what he did at New Mexico State he had three top 100 offenses during his time in Las Cruces so it's not as if he doesn't coach him up on the offensive end as well I think you'd like to think that this should be a better year offensively for this team we know the defense will be there there's no doubt and you, you have your best offensive player not playing for you. Uh, you have the, the rise of Josh Hubbard now. So, yes, to your point, and Coach Jans, he understands how to use his what he has on his roster. And last year, they had to win defensively. That's what they had to do to win. This year, they should be a better offensive team. They're going to be a better offensive team. And it starts with getting the big fellow in the middle, who was your go-to guy. He's the answer for a lot of things. Uh, He's just that good of a talent. This is Scott Padgett, former Kentucky player. Yeah. Not a bad guy to have on your bench. Padgett's technically the assistant to the head coach. It's kind of like George Costanza, right? The assistant to the <laughs> traveling <laughs> secretary. <laughs> he didn't want to be, he didn't want to have too much responsibilities. We've got a producer named Kramer and a, a stat guy named Newman today, so we might as well continue with the Seinfeld vibe. <laughs> Quick hands again, suffocating defense by Davis. Uh, tough pass and a steal by the Jaguars. Two on one. A foul and a hand one. Jeffries the guilty party, Joseph the leading scorer with 12 and a chance at 13 at the line. Got to show, give the credit to Southern after that turnover they get back. Identify passing lanes. Great up and under move right there. Knew he was going to, he was going to have contact, goes up strong. Tyreon Joseph, who came in averaging 18 points a game already with 12 in the first half. And he's been in attack mode. Whenever he touches the ball, whether it's in transition. And gets his own miss, hangs, fires, and banks it in. You don't see that very often. No, again, that 
it, it was no excuse for that Mississippi State. It just seems like you know, mentally that they're just they're a step slower today. And credit Southern. Somebody has to say, I got the shooter. No, you got the shooter. <laughs> Nobody had the, the ball. shooter there. <laughs> yeah. How about the ball? <laughs> Who's got the ball? Hubbard on a long range three. And, and you know, Hubbard, you have to feel like you've got somewhat of a green light, but you also wonder if that could be a little bit of a settle. Sure. It, and one thing about playing a zone defense, it slows down the offense to it almost lulls you into settling for a three and it takes your aggressiveness away and that's what i was saying before mississippi state they have to be committed to even if you're not throwing the ball in the post big guy you got to be committed to cut move because otherwise you could fall asleep behind that three-point line and that, that's all you shoot and playing right at the southern team we just got davis on an offensive foul that's his second break zone here in a one-point game Shot clock down to five. Gonna have to attack here with three. 15 footer on the way. And Hubbard cleans it up. Hubbard full throttle. Hubbard one on three. Now in trouble, got bottled up. Hubbard went, went right into no man's land. That's gonna lead to a layup on the other end. Boy, Southern is quick getting up that floor. I don't. I like Hubbard's aggressiveness there, Mike. It's just that we yeah, have one, two dribbles extra in there, but you want want to attack this Southern defense because they're a heck of a def half court defensive team, too. Now State getting a little sloppy back to back turnovers. Not exactly sure what that was, but that'll turn it over back the other way. Mississippi State will have it. When we come back, the Jags lead at 25. Anybody, including Michigan, wants to see the tide right now. No, I, I, I'm sure you saw the clip on uh, social media where it was announced. And it was in Michigan's uh, one of the rooms where they were watching it. And it was a collective sigh of, oh, no, we got <laughs> bam first right. Yeah, I don't think they were rooting for that by any means. Oh, nice move. That time, little finger roll action by Sean Jones. Sean Jones at a Houston, Texas Shadow Creek High School. Great effort to get inside the teeth of that defense for Southern, which Mississippi State has not been able to do very much. Matter of fact, 13 out of their 22 shots have been from the three-point line, so Southern's been able to win that battle. That'll be a jump ball, and this time the arrow goes to Mississippi State. And I'd like to see Mississippi State stay committed to attacking the offensive glass. Right now with just six, we had six offensive rebounds, um, eight points in the paint. With their size and athleticism, that's an area where they can take advantage of Southern. And this idea, pass down low intended for Cameron Matthews, who had a little daylight along the baseline. And that's the that's the cut I'm talking about, Mike. That baseline action. Don't just stand there. It's tempting. I'm telling you sometimes against these zone defenses, it's 2-3-3-2, 1-3-1 three, 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 to just sit in the corner and wait or sit on the wing and wait. You've got to keep moving. Taylor up top to Matthews. Finds an open shooter from three. That's Jones. Rims off. So now the Bulldogs are four for 14 from downtown. And 14 of their 23 shots have come from behind the arc. Look at that shot. High over the magic square and in that time by Joseph. It comes off another high pick and roll. That time, Shaq Moore decides to follow the screen. Joseph does a good job of taking all the way to the rack. Second three ball by Taylor. That's part of the reason they brought him in, a guy that will give them some much improved shooting from a year ago. He's two for two from downtown. 
And if I'm anybody in Mississippi State, I'm always knowing where Taylor is. Like, you have to be able to, whether it's transition against the zone, whether it's a half-court offense against a man-to-man, -man, you just got to know you're his teammate, where he is going to be. Because he's that much of a difference maker from the three-point line. Taylor, all Sunbelt selection last year for the Marshall Thundering Herd. In fact, two Marshall's players are now in the SEC. Analog, all Sunbelt big man, is a transfer for University of Florida, has already played very well in the early going in Gainesville. And a very friendly bounce. On the first free throw. Coming up next, catch the annual SCC Now Bowl special, an in-depth look at all the SCC teams playing in bowl games. Plus, they'll preview the college football playoff semifinals. That's coming up next on the SCC Network. Another minute to go and a one-point game at the half. And the use it or lose it timeout burned here by Coach Pence. Pretty impressive performance by Tyree. He attacks. He attacks you just from the three point line. He attacks by going to the paint as well. He's played the entire first half and he's been a one man wrecking crew. The rest of the Jaguar squad just two for seven from the field. Hubbard to Taylor, the two newcomers. Back to Hubbard, finds a cutter, slam city! Flashing through the lane and soaring through the air is Sean Jones. And that's why if you coach James, you take that time out right there. Did you see a little bit difference in the player movement, ball movement, the cutting action from Mississippi State? Great job by coach James to understand how important this, that last possession would be for Mississippi State. That was zone dissection and now the Bulldogs can play for the final shot of the half. We've had 12 lead changes in this first half. Matthews spot and fire a three. Short, and that is how the first half will come to a close. Highlight of the half will be the last bucket of the half, and it comes to Mississippi State. Play a move. Uh, you can see the graphic right there. How much better they shoot the basketball. 53% to 20% when they move the basketball. And... I know Coach James isn't going to be happy about this stat, but they have a negative assisted turnover ratio as well. So uh, they turned it over too much against Georgia Tech, didn't share it enough. And then in today's game, he's sitting on nine turnovers right now, Mike. That's uh, looking at 18 for a game. That's not very good. Well, that is a rare occurrence against Mississippi State and Chris James. Three opportunities. Thanks to two offensive rebounds. Good job crashing by Southern. It's a one-point game. Think about this. Jimmy Bell leads the SEC in, in rebounding. He gets about 10 a game. He gets he gets over three offensive rebounds per game. Uh, I, I felt like in the second half, one of the areas that Mississippi State flex their muscles, literally and figuratively, is on that offensive glass. But credit Southern. They have just clamped down in that paint and not allowed Mississippi State to really get their footing in that SEC logo area. Third foul on Jalen Reynolds, number 12 in powder blue. And Mississippi State obviously the deeper team. In fact, it's the Bulldogs bench that outscored Southern 15-0 in that first half. Baseline drive and then just a bobble. A fumble and lucky to have it back as Mississippi State as Kent Matthews played a game of hot potato. <laughs> yeah, but well, that's another example, right? I like I like the attack baseline. But I didn't see the other four guys moving, Mike. You got if you want people always say, Man, how's that guy always get open? How does he always get open? Well, if you're a scorer, a shooter, anybody, you've got to create a passing lane for your teammate. As your teammate is also creating a passing lane to get it to you. Your responsibility is to create a passing lane as well. And, and Mississippi State needs to do a better job of that against uh, this tough Southern defense. It almost feels like the Mississippi State offense is still a work in progress. And obviously they've got help on the way with Tolu Smith. That 
changes the dynamics. One of the better post players and rebounders in the league. Shot clock down to five for the Bulldogs. Down to two. Going to have to heave it. And that hits no, no rim, so a shot clock violation as Matthews can't find the iron. And there's to there's Tulu Smith, and this was him earlier today. And you can see that Tulu Smith, again, if it was up to him, he'd be playing right now, Pat. But sometimes you can't let the player make that kind of decision because you know they want to be out there. you got to think long term, though. Right, that's exactly right. And that's what we love about Coach Jans. He understands what's coming. Very nice at a run. Yeah, that's Sean Jones. He's had some flashes in this game. Very talented looking sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Comes off of a defensive rebound. Great job getting out in transition. Welcoming the contact, finishing strong. With the right hand on the left side. And Coach Jans understands this. You bring Tolu in, it's a completely different half court offense they can run and you know, Jimmy Bell's obviously good they got him the ball in the post but Tolu's big strong strong hands really good footwork again he's done such a better job over the last couple of years now he takes that double team because you've got a double team and he can just pick out his passes on the perimeter Tolu also gets to the free throw line more than anybody in the SEC when he's out there so he gets some easy points at the stripe although he needs to certainly improve on his free throw shooting Leaner too strong. Rebound out to Matthews. Matthews who does so many things. One of the more versatile players in this league. Coach Jans calls him the Swiss Army Knife. Unfortunately, that time he turns it over, and that'll lead to an easy opportunity. And then Matthews comes back out of nowhere and gets the rejection. So give him credit. He turned it over, but he never gave up on the play. Yeah. You're saying the Swiss Army knife. He does it all. And <laughs> ar ar arguably, DJ Jeffries and Kim Matthews are in the top of the SEC in terms of, as you put it, the Swiss Army knife. Those guys can handle it. They can shoot it. They defend. They rebound. Both of those guys are in the top 10 SEC rebounding. So uh, they, they impact the game on so many different levels. And they've both played a ton of games in their career. They've got a lot of experience both of those players, Matthews and Jeffries. Shot clock waning down to three seconds. A last second heat, no, and the rebound out to Mississippi State. And it was just Jimmy Bell's, Jimmy Bell tearing it away from everybody else. Yeah. Shoe on the face up there. Never happened to me before, Mike. I don't know about you. You never lost a shoe in the middle of a game, huh? I've lost a shoe in the hotel rooms and other various <laughs> places, but never while playing. Never while playing. Well, so many of these guys now wear the low tops. I mean, I mm. think, you know, when, when I played, everybody wore at least three-quarter, if not high tops. Now they're wearing, like, tennis shoes out there. <laughs> I don't know how most guys don't just snap their ankles in two. If you could see Mississippi State has come out a different basketball team. Coach Jan said, fellas, let's take it to the hoop. Let's rebound. No second opportunities to Southern. Great job, Mississippi State, coming out of the second half. Nice job by Davis on the attack with the left. He's got five. The lead is six now for the Bullies. Another rebound as it comes off to Jimmy Bell. Bell now with nine rebounds. Bell wants it inside, a paint touch, muscles his way and gets an and one. Jimmy Bell earned that one on both ends of the floor. Uh, I'm sure Coach Jans has got a big smile on his face. Back-to-back -back possessions, let's attack. Very good attack move right there. Opens up the lane because you draw the double team. And then big Jimmy Bell. He says, just get on my back, both of you. We're all three of you, and I'm just going to finish. And that's he the game plan that Coach Shans wants to see. And not a bad one at that. He just carved up some space in the lane. 
misses the free throw, but the Bulldogs are out to their largest lead of the game. It's 38-30. Tough shot and a make from way downtown. That's Joseph again, by far and away their best scoring weapon. He's got 21. If Southern is going to get back into this game, he's going <laughs> to in, in down only five now, but the momentum shift obviously feels like Mississippi State's in control. It's going to have to be Joseph. A legal screen on Bell will give it back to Southern when we come back. It's a five point. Southern did. And a big difference in this half is Southern beat Mississippi State in the first half, points in the paint. And Mississippi State in these possessions starting the second half and dominated the right at the rim. What do you think of the latest exchange, Pat? Well, certainly it's been Mississippi State been able to impose their will. I think we go into this game, we knew it would be a defensive battle. And there's been some bright spots, certainly Mr. Joseph uh, for Southern. And I think in the second half, Mississippi State has defended well, defensive rebound, and they've been able to run a little bit too. Apologize for having some audio difficulties. I'm sure we'll get those cleaned up momentarily. Meanwhile, Southern trying to make it a three-point game if that three would went down. Instead, it pops out, and here's Hubbard. Down low, Matthews. Matthews from the dime from Hubbard. And there it is again. Off that defensive rebound. Get out and run. Keep your head up. Vision. Don't over-penetrate, but it's important for your teammates to keep running and cutting to the open area. down the first free throw to make it a six-point game. Davis, the second leading scorer for the Jaguars now. And Mike, Tyrion another thing, both Joseph has been the star with 21. Both of these teams have been able to do a very good job of defending without fouling. And But when they did get to the free throw line, both teams have been able to make them. 7-9 for Southern and 7-10 for Mississippi State. Uh, this, this game is going to come down to points right at the rim. Can we can we get good looks at the rim? As he just makes There's a three, a three right Hubbard. on. <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, go to Hubbard. He's an igniter, that's for sure. And Hubbard now with eight points. Again, Mississippi State's leading scorer as a freshman off the bench, averaging over 16. Lead is back to eight. And contact that time. Matthews could not get out of the way. Let's see if we get a look at that. That's that verticality that most teams, all teams, because of the change in the, in the way block charge is going to be officiated, they're encouraging and they do it in practice. Instead of waiting there trying to take a charge, they're teaching these guys to go up vertically, jump. Right and not be at risk to have the block charge, which is going to be the most controversial call, I think, in uh, all sports, other than pass, pass interference. But they teach you to wall up, but clearly that time he kind of leaned in and made contact. Thought it was the right call, but you're right. That what they're teaching guys now is instead of trying to get there late and steal a charging call just go ahead and jump straight up wall up as they call it You're more likely to get the benefit of the doubt yeah, and, and the hope is that it's a no call right they just like let right. play through it and that is the biggest point of emphasis this year i know a lot of people are still kind of getting their feet wet 
in college basketball as we wound down the college football regular season in Champ Week. There's going to be a lot more block fouls called and fewer charge fouls called. You talk to some of the officials as we get a chance to do. It's going to be much more difficult to kind of come in late as a secondary defender and get that call. There's a three ball from the corner for Southern, and all of a sudden, it's back to a four-point game. You know Southern has that ability from the three-point line. Having uh, made 10 threes their last game and 11 the game before that, they can, they're, they're major threat from the three-point line. Deep three from Hubbard and the ball and luckily for Mississippi State the Southern player tipped it out of bounds and this is, that's uh, Diomasi. But not that, a great look that time by Hubbard. In that possession the basketball didn't even go below the free throw line. You've got to make the deep. This is a tough Southern defensive team. You've got to make a move. Oh. Pass right to a Southern player and then an easy bucket on the other end by guess who? Tyrion Joseph lighting it up now for 25 points and it's a two-point game. A season and career high for Joseph. And we got a lot of basketball left to play at the hump. Matthews, meanwhile, draws the foul on the other end. Good decision by Kim Matthews. He turns down that top of the key three-point shot. Puts it on the floor. Southern did a good job. Of, he tried to draw that double team. He's going to kick it out to DJ Jeffries, but realized that he had the, the size and the length and the strength advantage straight to the hoop. You know, as we were watching that video, Pat, of the, the 2015 matchup between these two of course Southern pulled off the upset in that one these kind of games sometimes get lost in the shuffle but if you're a bubble team in March when you lose a game like this it could be the difference between the NCAA tournament and the NIT yes no you're right and you mentioned Southern their eighth game on the road so this is nothing new to them right having to go on the road and and play against the top top level team, top 25 team. They come in one and six, but I mean they have been road warriors, traveling all over the country, everywhere from UNLV to TCU to Marquette, and Arizona, and everything in between. That's just the the life of some mid majors that have to to play in those what we call money games, pay games to meet the budget so you've got seven games all on the road for head coach Kevin Johnson and Southern oh this is a great look right here look at the amount of miles <laughs> that I'm telling you what you get to go in the uh, in the sky lounge when you log these kind of miles now <laughs> you get diamond medallion status when you go 1600 here 1300 there 1000 there TCU was the closest thing to 460 and a lot of these trips for a team like Southern those are bus rides. Those aren't charter flight trips for many of them. You don't have the budget that some of the Power 6 schools have. A couple of nice warm weather schools they got a chance. But also, you know, how many top 25 games? There are three top 25 games. So that's a great experience for Coach Johnson and his team. And how hard they play. Their defense gives them a chance. And then you add in a guy... That's having a, could have a career night with Joseph is going the offensive end. And that's a, that's a recipe to go on the road and get a victory. Over 6,000 miles long all, already by this Jaguar squad. Hubbard up top out of the hands of Taylor. Now in the corner, it's Hubbard on a three. Big time bucket by the freshman who now has 11. It's a simple game. The ball moves. Great skip pass. Make the defense move. All-time prep scorer in the history of the state of Mississippi. Over 4,000 points for the freshman Josh Hubbard out of Madison Ridgeland Academy. 
Now, he probably started playing high school in the fifth grade. 4,000 points? Four th he played in the eighth grade. Okay. I know that much. <laughs> Might have been JV in the fifth. Hubbard again. It's a heat check. That's a Pat Bradley type shot. He wasn't even <laughs> thinking about looking anywhere else but the bucket. Yeah, but it took me until my senior year to try and <laughs> take a shot like that. Kids, you would have gotten some ugly looks if you did that as a freshman. Oh, yeah. Foul on the floor. And it's against Mississippi State. When we come back, it will be Southern basketball. The entire city, which is over 7 million in population, it, it becomes engulfed in college football for that weekend. A lot of fun to be here for that. And again, another classic showdown between Georgia and Alabama. It was. And, you know, I don't have any issue with Alabama being in the in the final four of the college football playoff. Uh, watching them over the last couple of weeks, uh, you could, their you know, row obviously is, seems to have just grow up right, right in front of us. Make some big plays and he made some big throws last night and with his feet too. Big first downs he got. By the way, while we're talking Georgia, Alabama, congratulations to, to Georgia and Mike White. They've already picked up some pretty big non-con victories and for Alabama and, and Nate Oates obviously a, a loss of a lot of talented players to the NBA draft but what is your impression early on with what Alabama basketball is going to look like well they again are fantastic offensively <clears throat> we're averaging over 100 points a game they got quite possibly the best transfer could be end up being the best transfer in the country in Grant Nelson uh, Mark Sears is playing fantastic, but how about Mike White in Georgia? You mentioned yeah. their non-conference wins. How about on the recruiting trail? A couple of huge pickups. A couple of top 100 kids coming, and uh, the, the win against Florida State and the SEC ACC Challenge. I think Mike White's got a squad in Athens this year. Nice take to the bucket by Deshaun Davis. Deshaun Davis. Coach Nate Oates telling us he. Wants him to be more productive, get downhill more, facilitate more. He believes that his best basketball is still ahead of him this year. And how about Davis on a steal? He's going to go downhill here and take it right to the rack plus the foul. An and one for Deshaun Davis. The aggressiveness of Mississippi State's defense, hands on the ball, not reaching, but if you expose it, we're taught to get that turnover put into two right there you see that high pick and roll which they had struggled with last two games great communication great hands and great finish and Mississippi State Largest. in the previous possession we're able to get in driving lane in that southern defense which they hadn't been able to do very often especially in the first half Davis with nine and the largest lead for Mississippi State. It's 10, 52-42, under 10 minutes to go. Well, I love that defense, Mike. So Davis prevents Joseph from coming off that. Or was that Shaq Moore? Prevents Joseph from coming off that high ball screen. Keeps it on the baseline so that nobody has to get into rotations. And then once your defense gets into rotations, now you're trying to help, and that's when it's total breakdown. And almost another turnover force that time by that state defense, which is all over the place. Well, Mississippi State has great depth. They play 10 guys, 10 guys in the first half. Uh, no one's averaging over 23 minutes a game for Mississippi State, so it's just wave after wave of fresh legs coming at you, and eventually they wear you down. We saw them win a bunch of games like that last year. They just lean on you, wear you down. Uh, and they're going to do it even if they even if they're not making shots, right? And that's just the beauty of how Coach Jans is relentless defensively, and of course coming downhill from an offensive standpoint. Well, that'll be a chance for a three the hard way. Demasi takes it strong, gets the whistle. A great attack move. Not easy though. You're not going to get many easy looks at it against Mississippi State's defense, but Demasi. Strong playing through contact with a great finish, great focus. 
Free throw too strong, and there's Jeffries to grab the carry. Back to an eight-point game. Inside Bobble and lost it out of bounds. Did Jimmy Bell? That, 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 that's that's a guard's dream when the big fella has got it on the block and you come from all the way in the baseline and he doesn't know you're coming there and you just get the strip. That's a dream for, for a little guy. Shia lie down to five. Defense. Here comes Taylor in the front court. They work it around the horn, sets up an open three from the corner. That misses everything, but there to pick up the trash is Bell. That spins out. Taylor somehow comes out of it. And a fresh 20 seconds for Mississippi State. A double dribble. What's that? that looked like a double dribble. I, the <laughs> officials might have missed that one. And well, they didn't miss that one. That's a walk <laughs> on Jimmy Bell. You and I are looking at the same thing. <laughs> and that looked like a an extra dribble, unless it was knocked away. Maybe we can get another look at that. Get away with it. Nice try. <laughs> Let's watch this. So he kills a dribble here, and then just puts it back down. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's a double dribble in any level, any language. As they say, ball don't lie. Mississippi State winds up turning it over a few seconds later anyway. And, Mike, they finished the half with uh, nine turnovers, sitting on 14 right now, so doing a much better job halfway, more than halfway through the second half uh, as they did in the first half. Southern's hanging around here. The eight-minute mark. It's an eight-point game. Pump fake. Mid-range. Rims off. Rebound fought for. Out of bounds to the Bulldogs. And that'll bring us to immediate timeout. We will step aside with 7.53 to go. Mississippi State 52. Playoff spot. They'll take on the number one seed, Michigan, on New Year's Day. You see Mizzou, Ohio State, Ole Miss, Penn State, Georgia, Florida State. Some of the top matchups involving SEC teams. It should be a lot of fun as the SEC gears up for the potential of yet another national championship on the gridiron. Pat, what are we looking for out of the final seven and a half minutes from Mississippi State? Well, I think it's going to be a lot of that patience. And you see that scrambling Southern defense. So you've got to protect the basketball. We just had the graphic of turnovers. There's a couple of things that get you in trouble here. Turnovers, because Southern is quick getting up the floor. And we all, we, we know, although they're only 4 or 15 from the three-point line. You turn it over, they get up the floor, knock down a couple threes. And, and, and you're basically giving the game over to them. So... You got to take care of the basketball, and you got to be committed to getting it in the paint if you're Mississippi State. And for Southern, you got to continue to have that scrambling defense, uh, swarming defense, to not allow Mississippi State to take advantage of their size and athleticism. You see on your screen, this game has had 31 turnovers. A lot of it has been great defense. Some of it, quite frankly, has been a little sloppy offense. Whoever cleans it up here. In the final seven minutes, might wind up being the key to this game. Strong take and a late whistle and a foul on Hubbard. Southern, great job of moving that high ball screen. They were doing it, trying to do a lot of it from the top of the key. There was great some issues from Mississippi State in the first half right there. The ball screen came from the right wing. Slow rotation of Mississippi State. Southern finds themselves at the free throw line again. Dumasi calls Bank. Bank <laughs> open on a Sunday for the Southern Jaguar who has to crack a smile at that one. Did you ever bank a free throw, Pat Bradley? Um, yes, but it was just playing around with my left hand. 
Only if you meant to bank it. <laughs> Abel Morse, that's not a bad shot. <laughs> we should call it great attack. Hubbard, yes, count the basket and the foul. And, and that's the risk for Southern with their very aggressive defense. You see right there, was out to half court. Quick ball movement, quick explosive action by Hubbard right there, and you find yourself a driving lane, and he's strong enough to finish, even though he gets hit. Well, you can thank Kermit Davis in part for discovering, I shouldn't say discovering, he was a top 100 recruit, but Herbert Day, excuse me, Kermit Davis was the one who actually initially signed Josh Hubbard, and then obviously when Ole Miss parted ways with their coach, that allowed the recruiting to restart, and Kermit Davis and Chris Jans have a great relationship, talked about it, and sometimes the plans, the best plans are not the ones you originally lay out, but you see his terrific prep career, over 4,300 points in high school. At just five foot, 10 inches tall, all being Cardi and company. Had him ranked number 88 in the ESPN 100. And even though he comes off the bench, he plays a ton of minutes. And he is their volume shooter overall. So it really doesn't matter whether they start him or whether or not he comes off the bench. He is their top scorer. And, and we know typically you're not going to have a freshman come in and lead your team in scoring. Even if he's such a talented scorer, 4,000 points in high school. However, you know he's got that mentality of scoring. And it's in, it, it's, I'm sure he, he'd done it as, as early as he could dribble the basketball. And that's just a mentality to have that as a scorer. And Coach Jantz talked about how he doesn't consider him a freshman anymore. He said, I'm <laughs> this kid is part of what we do. And this is not uh, a fluke of a freshman coming in and having a hot start. This kid's got the talent. That record that he broke, by the way, stood for 37 years in the Magnolia State. It was held by Mississippi State's Robert Woodard before that, 37 years previous. He also led Madison Ridgeland Academy to the state championship 6A back in 2021. Runners up in 2022. Nice, great Decision. ball movement. And, and that's what G.J. Jeffries can give you. 6'7", versatile, good passer to play in the middle of that defense and make the right decision. A steal by Jeffries. Great job on the transition. Three on one lends to a two hand stuff for Cameron Matthews. That Mississippi That's State. Unselfish defense. basketball right there, Pat. Very unselfish. Uh, their defense, too. Believe it or not, you have to have a level of unselfishness on your defense when you're talking about helping uh, your teammate. And a three response, much needed one for Southern. A quick timeout for Kevin Johnson as he'll talk things over and try to get things going. And the final five, it's acceptable. A flush, a, a slam, a yoke. What about a yoke? Who used to say that growing up? Yoke. Oh, we, yoke. we still use yoke. We're very That's egg good. friendly here on the SEC Network. Mike Morgan, Pat Bradley, the final five and a half for you <laughs> from the hump. Mississippi State trying to improve to 7-1 and one on the year. Good decision there. Mississippi State could turn, probably attack the rim, take a little time off the clock. They milk it down to five seconds left to shoot. Matthews on the attack, gliding, firing, missed it. And Southern with a good stop on the defensive end. And this is where decision making for Mississippi State. You want to pull it back out. You got to get into something and get a good shot at it. If not, take that first available shot. Again, against a good Southern defense, that may be the best shot you're going to get in the, in the shot clock. And three was online, just a little bit short for Dumas. Line pass, Taylor to Jeffries on the slam. Taking advantage of that over-aggressive Southern defense, and Southern really didn't have a choice. They've got to put the pressure on, try to create some turnovers, get back in this. 
Almost another steal there. And there's a bucket by Wilkins. They cut it to nine. Yeah, and you get a tip of the cap to their defense, right? They've won. They're one of the few teams in the country that can win a bunch of games scoring 60 points. And uh, the variety of ways they can score off their defense, uh, they've improved their shooting this year. And, of course, we know, you know Josh Hubbard's a hard-driving guard, and when Tolu comes back, throw it to Tolu Smith in the, in the paint. So... And they're a high free throw shooting team, although they've only been 16 times today, 10 of 16. I think that's a, really a tribute to Southern and well they defend without fouling. And it's been less one on one in this game. 17 of, this, of the Bulldogs' 21 baskets have come off an assist in this game. And really the defensive end. In the second half, defensive rebounding, but also I think getting the ball into the paint a lot more than settling for the three-point shot has helped Mississippi State so far. That's a bit of a settle right there late in the shot clock, but an offensive rebound and a and one that time for Brandon Davis at the most opportune time for Southern. A free throw here makes it a six-point game. Smallest guy on the court. As an instinct for the ball, fearless. Although it was tipped, he followed his own shot. And yeah, someone's going to hear about that one not boxing out to let that smallest guy get the rebound. And that really changes the complexion of this game. Now it's a six point game, still a ton of time, three minutes, three seconds to go. Here's the leading SEC rebounder, Jimmy Bell, comes in after. Mississippi State gives up that offensive rebound. Mississippi State has to stay on the attack. They have still continued to be aggressive. Davis. Well, they were trying to hit Hubbard in the corner, but the pass is intercepted. Well, a three here would make it a one position game. Three from the top, and it is a three-point game. We talked about how Southern coming off in a game where they made 11 threes. Very, very dangerous. They can pour it on quick. And now Chris Jans will burn a timeout with 2.08 to play. 59-56. This game, tell you like it is, he told us point blank this week that he was downright ticked off about the way his team played at Georgia Tech. And watching his animation during that timeout, he was not too pleased with the way Mississippi State handled the last couple of possessions to make this a three-point game. Well, Mike, it's mental errors, right? It's mm -hmm. it's not picking up a rotation, leaving a guy wide open. It's you know making a pass that you shouldn't have. I thought the pre previous possession, they may be a little too unselfish. Ended up throwing in the hands of a Southern player. They got the shot they wanted out of the timeout, but Hubbard misfires. So here we go. A three could tie it. Dumasi. On the attack, pull up mid-range, pops out, halfway down but out. And you still have to stay aggressive Mississippi State's offense because it's a one-possession game. And you're going to take advantage of the best available first shot you can as well as you want it. Yes, you want to take some time off the clock, but not at the expense of a, of a good look at high percentage shot. And then a turnover. Jeffries just had it slip out of his hands and a bucket the other way. It's a one-point game. Joseph, who's been rather quiet in the second half, but now has a game-high 27 points. And another timeout called with 54.9. Wow. And this would be considered an unforced error right continues to put on that 
three-quarter court, half court trap and pressure. Of course, Mississippi State's getting in the half court now, but I would be surprised if Southern, uh, they're still in that 1-3-1. One, one. And this is where Mississippi State needs to stay aggressive. Cut, screen. Southern is on a 10-0 run. Mississippi State in desperate need of a basket. Can't buy one there. Under 40 seconds to play. A one-point game. And we've got an injured player. That is Wilkins all the way back on the baseline. He's to rub his head there, make sure he's okay. Oh, there you see, <laughs> he ran into... That's like running Ooh. into a Mack truck when you run into Jimmy Bell. My, yeah, it is. And credit Southern. Look at five oh, guys scrapping. Yeah, he got him. Now, uh, are they going to go to the table and look at that? Usually Talk contact above the neck. They would take another look. They will not do that here. Southern on a 10-0 run in the last four minutes. Drive. Basket. Southern has the lead with 23.2. First lead of the half for the Jaguars. Bulldogs have a timeout if they want to use it. Shot up, no, tapped, no, tapped again, and a loose ball. We've got a jump ball, a jump ball, and the arrow goes to Mississippi State with 8.1 to play. Bands would like to offer up here. Oh, you get Jimmy Bell in, you get Taylor, <clears throat> Kim Matthews, Davis is throwing the ball and bounce. He's played well in the second half. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to try to get Jimmy Bell close to the rim somehow. Comes in to Hubbard in the corner. Hubbard with five. Hubbard leaning, has it rejected. Picked up by Southern, and Southern is going to wrap it up with a dunk on the other end. The Jaguars pull off the upset. The bucket won't count. It doesn't matter. Southern still wins it by a point on a...